Now, what is going on, everybody? Today, we're going to talk about error handling on an API level with Express. So we're not talking about like uh, try catch in general, like with JavaScript, but how do you return proper errors in your Express.js server and how do you not leak any sensitive information? And in order to demonstrate this, I got a really simple example app over here. So I already pre-wrote this because it would have been boring to just write all of this out. So basically it's just a simple uh, server and it's listening on port 8080 and it's going, it has like one router and this router has like one route, which is a post request to slash tweet and um, our tweet controller, like we have a controller and this controller is handling like this tweet, this tweet. And we're just going to pretend that um, he, with this endpoint that we're going, we can create like a tweet. So if you look at the implementation, it's like pretty simple. So we have this method here. Um, it's going to expect like a message field inside of the body. And if this is not there, then it's going to return a bad request error. And otherwise it's just going to return a 201 status which is kind of fake, right? Because we didn't do anything. But um, for the sake of this tutorial, I think it's fine. And what you often see people do is what I have here, so that they are trying to handle the error directly like in the controller and directly return the correct status code. And while this might work for like such a simple uh, tutorial, uh, like the one we have here, it can get pretty messy uh, later on. And that's why there's actually a better approach. Um, now, I have already shown you like this web page. Um, I would highly encourage you to kind of read through it. It's like the express guide on how to do error handling. Um, but I'm just going to show you how I typically do it. And maybe you can get some inspiration from that. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments. So what I typically do is I'll make a directory and I'll just call this arrow. And we have two goals right now. So our first goal is we do not want to handle the error here directly. And our second goal is we want to make sure that we do not leak any sensitive information. Like if someone tries to attack our server, uh, we don't want to leak any information. And what I typically do is I create a class. Um, so I'll just call this API error. And this API error has like two fields, um, a code, which stands for the status code and a message, which is like the actual error message. Okay. So I'm just going to set this in constructor right here. And then I am typically adding methods for the different statuses or the expected errors that I have. So for example, um, I could say a bad request and you can pass in an arbitrary message. And I'm just going to return a new API error with the 400 status code and the message. So what this is going to do is it's going to make, uh, to create a static method called bad request. And since we have this static keyword over here, what we can do is we can invoke this method by saying API error dot bad request. So we do not need to use new API error and so on but we can just use like this method over here. And what you probably also want to have is you probably want to have an internal server error because that's pretty much like the default. So if you don't know um, what to return, then you probably want to return an internal server error to not leak like any information. Uh, cool. So that's our API error class and I'm just going to export um, this class. Yeah, and that's it. And instead of, you know, returning like this thing directly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an error handling uh, middleware. And this middleware is going to check if the error we get is of type API error. And if it is, then we know that this is some kind of expected error and that we can safely return the error message to the user without um, accidentally leaking some information. So I'm just going to add an other handler in here. So I'm going to call this API error handler. And I'm just, this is just a function. 
and the signature looks basically exactly like a standard request handle signature. The only difference here is that the first parameter uh, is an arrow. And if you have four parameters in your middleware, then basically Express knows that it is an arrow handling middleware. And what we should do is the first thing you want to do is you want to log this arrow. Uh, but in prod, uh, don't use console, don't use console error. Log or console error because it's not async. Sync. It's not async. Just wanted to mention this over here. So if whatever if this error like is super big and you try to log it with console log or console error, um, then it's going to be super slow. So I would recommend like a logging library like Winston uh, or Bunyan, Bunyan, I think, yeah. Cool, and what we are just going to do is we're going to say if our error is an expected error, so if it's something that we want to return to the user, um, then we are going to return the status code like of the error and we're going to return a message. And afterwards we're going to return. Now this return here is important um, because if we don't know what to do, then we want to return a generic uh, internal server error and then we'll say something went wrong. And I just said it's important because if we are in here and we return like something, then we need to get out of this method because otherwise we're trying to return something twice. So that might be a problem. Um, and we still need to uh, export this. Okay. So that's our error handler. Um, it's actually pretty simple, right? It just logs it, it checks, is this like some kind of expected error? If yes, I return the error and otherwise I just return a generic internal server error. And now um, we actually get to the part where it gets interesting because you need to understand um, what this next uh, parameter does. But before we do that, I just saw that I forgot to import the API error. Um, so I'm just going to require it. Yeah. Okay, that should be it. Um, now, this next, what this next function does is if you call next, like this, what it's going to say is, hey, I'm done here with this handler. Um, please pass over the control to the next handler in the chain. So if we're talking about Express, right, and about middlewares, you kind of plug in your first middleware and then you plug in your next middleware, so to say. And if you call next in any of these, then it's just going to pass on the control to the next uh, handler. And what I typically do is I just make my API error handler the last handler in the chain. So I just import this over here, um, error, API error handler. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to say app.use API error handler. Okay, did we export this? Yes. Okay, cool. So what we can do now here, instead of returning like, or hard coding like this 400 code, what we can just say is we can just return an API error. So we can say a const API error equals require and then one up and then error and then API error. And we can just say API error dot bad request um, message field is required and must be non blank. And what this is going to do is it's going to pass on the control to the next handler. And the important thing here to understand is that if you call next like this, then Express uh, is assuming that no error happened. However, if you put anything inside of this, uh, inside of the method, like as a parameter, then it's going to assume that it is an error. And that is important to understand. So what this thing is doing, it's checking, okay, do I have a correct uh, request or do I have the correct data? If not, I'm just going to say, okay, I'm done here. Here's like the error that I created and then I'm going to return.
Now the return here is important because otherwise we execute this as well and then your server will crash. And since our error handler is basically the last in the line, what's going to happen is that we will end up at this error handler here and that we're going to uh, properly return the error. So let's just try this out. Um, let's run this and see whether we did everything correctly. Yeah, it seems it's fine, but let's see. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have a postman request here and I'm going to make a post request to slash tweet and I'm going to omit like this uh, message thing. And now technically we should get an error, yes. So pretty nice, you see, uh -huh, it has like a bad request and the message field is required and must be non-blank. That this is good, like an error message like this can be safely passed to the user. And if I put like it back in again, yeah, then you see we get a 201 back. So we're basically inside here. So this is working pretty well. Now, one more thing, if for whatever reason, like an error occurs down here and you, pa you pass something that is not an API error, uh, then it's just going to return a generic error message. And right here in this, right here, like this might not be, um, it might not be, whoops. Um, why is this? Oh, because I need to put, oh, sorry need to put this back in yeah and then you get something went wrong so let's just assume down here you have additional logic right with try catch and you know or maybe you have some error that you're just not handling because you have a bug um, then if you pass any non any error that is not of type api error to the middleware then it's going to just return like the generic error message and that is exactly what we want so like so, we make sure that we do not leak any data to the user. Yeah, so that's it pretty much for error handling. As you can see, it's uh, pretty simple. Uh, please let me know what you think about this in the comments. Uh, please leave a like if you found that useful. And um, you can also reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is at production coder. I'll also put it in the uh, description down below. And I have also created an email list. So if you guys want to have a say in what we build next on this channel, you can sign up there and then we can, um, like you can have a say in what we do next on this channel because I will send an email around from time to time. So again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.